Hey guys, Mr. Bullock here, and this uh, lesson is on properties of parallelograms. Okay, remember I go fast through these lessons, so uh, if you need to pause to write things down or pause to rewind, you can do that. So I'm just going fast to make these lessons shorter. All right, so let's begin. Properties of parallelograms. So let me start off with the definition of a parallelogram. Uh, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral where both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So here's an example right here. Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. The arrows mean that they're parallel. So these arrows mean that these opposite sides are parallel. And the two arrows on each side mean that those two sides are parallel as well. Okay, so let's go. Uh, so here's another one. Another parallelogram, probably a square right there. Squares are parallelograms. So are rectangles. Uh, so are rhombi, you guys. A rhombus is a, a square that's squished over. Can you see the square? If I squished it over, it would make it look like that. Okay, the only difference between these two guys is this one doesn't have right angles in it. All right, this one has right angles in it. So the sides are all equal still. It's just, uh, but they're parallelograms. Those are all examples of parallelograms. Okay, so here's some theorems, you guys. All these theorems begin with if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then. So here we go. All these are parallelograms. So then uh, opposite sides are congruent. So here, those two opposite sides are congruent on there. Opposite angles are congruent. So here those two opposite angles are congruent. Both pairs. All right. Consecutive angles are supplementary. Supplementary means they add up to 180. So if that's 130, then consecutive means the next two angles, the adjacent angles, the ones that are right next to each other. Okay, so this is uh, this has to be 50 because 130 plus 50. And this is going to be 130 because these two guys have to be supplementary also. And then these two guys have to be supplementary. So if that's 130, I know all the rest of them right there. All right. And then the last one is that the diagonals bisect each other. Well, if the diagonals bisect each other, it means it cuts them into two equal pieces. So those guys are equal and those guys are equal. These guys don't equal these guys unless it's a rectangle or a square. But, um, uh, but the diagonals bisect each other. So it cuts them into two equal pieces. Okay, let's find the values of x and y on these. Okay, so here's a parallelogram. Okay, opposite sides are congruent, so I'm going to say these two guys are congruent, and opposite angles are congruent, so these guys are equal also. Okay, so uh, x plus 4 equals 12, and y equals 65, and then subtract 4 on both sides, you get x equals 8. Okay, let's do that again. Okay, again, same thing, opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, so I'm going to divide by 2 on that 2x, and I'm going to subtract 3 on the y, and you get uh, x equals 25, y equals 15. Okay, here, uh, this parallelogram, the diagonals, this 4y plus 4 is for this piece right here. Okay, so 4y plus 4 is that piece. Okay, so the diagonals bisect each other. So 5y equals 4y plus 4, and 3x equals 12. All right, and then, uh, so then you're going to divide by 3. Uh, over here and, to, and you get x equals 4. On the other one you can subtract 4y and get y equals 4. Alright, so here we have the diagonals of a parallelogram intersect at point P. What's the coordinates of P? And I gave you a hint. Uh, you're going to use midpoint formula and you just got to find out what are the ordered pairs of M and N and o, or you know O and N. So I can either use O and M for midpoints or, or L and N. So Here's all the coordinates of all those guys right there. Oops, there's a midpoint formula. Don't forget that. Midpoint formula is uh, you average your x's over 2 and you average your y's over 2. So add the two x's, divide by 2, and add the two y's. Okay, here's the coordinates of all those corners right there. Now I can either use 1, 4, and 6, 0 for this midpoint formula or 0, 0, and 7, 1. And I like 0, 0. That's easy to, to uh, compute, you guys. So, um, so I chose the easier route just like you guys would. Okay, so uh, 0 plus 7 over 2, and then 0 plus 1 over 2, you get 7 halves, and then 1 half. Okay, so that's where P is. All right, so find the indicated measures in this parallelogram. All right, so I got the parallelogram right here. First thing I'm going to notice is the diagonals bisect each other, so if that side's 2, this side's 2 right there. So that's what NM is, it's 2. And then this says KM. Well, KM is the whole diagonal, so the whole thing. So 2 plus 2 equals 4. Segment addition postulate says I can do that. Okay, and then this next piece right here, uh, I did consecutive angles or supplementary. Remember that? If that's 110, then this angle over here, sorry as my mouse uh, didn't work so well. I used my finger. I'm on a laptop. Um, this is going to be 70, the whole angle 70, because 70 plus 110 is 180. And then, uh, and then I'm going to use the angle addition postulate for KML. Here's K. 
ML, that's this angle right here. That's this little angle right here. So I'm going to use the angle addition postulate. If the whole thing is 70, then 30 plus 40 is going to get me 70 right there. So that guy's going to be 70. All right. Okay, so let's try uh, one more of these guys and then we'll be done. Okay, you got this parallelogram right here. It looks like we're finding a bunch of angles right here. First thing I'm going to recognize is I have some alternate interior angles happening. Since it's a parallelogram, then this 85 is going to match up with this 85 right here. And this 45 is going to match up with this 45 right there. So I'm going to go ahead and label those right now. Okay, and put them in their appropriate spots right there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is notice that straight line right there. Straight lines are 180. And they want to know this angle right here, angle, this number one, angle uh, EJF. So right here, if this is 60, then this angle right here, let's see if I can uh, highlight that right there. Well, I don't want, well, maybe I'll do that in a highlighter right there. This angle right here is going to be the rest of 180. See that angle right there? Okay, you got 60 on the other side, so 60 plus 120 gets me 180, so that angle right there is 120. Okay, next thing I'm going to focus on, because they want this angle up here in the upper right-hand up, upper right hand corner right there, so I'm going to look at this triangle. Triangles add up to 180. So if I add up 60 and 85 and take that off of 180, I find out that, that top angle is 35. Okay, and then um, uh, right here, number five, HGF, that's this bottom angle, HGF, this bottom right-hand corner. So I'm going to use the angle addition postulate and add 45 plus 85 and get uh, 130. And then this last angle, e, e, J, uh, e, H, G, that's this other angle over here, this dude right here, okay? And then so remember, it's going to be uh, supplementary with this angle because they're consecutive angles. So I'm going to go ahead and since that one's 130, then it's going to be uh, the supplement of that or one or just plain 50.